Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for episode five of the Isle of Man Sport Podcast. So we were very lucky to have Andy Varnum for our last uh, last podcast. This time we're going to have a little bit of a feature on females and coaching, and we have four lovely ladies with us tonight. So we just uh, go around the room and just have a little introduction. So to my left we have. Uh, Trisha Quine, judo coach. And next we have... Uh, Dana Callow, athletics. Moving on to... Claire Batty, netball. And last but not least... Heather Melvin, swimming. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for coming along, girls, and giving up your time. Uh, it was interesting that Manx Radio had a, a feature on females in sport recently. I think they had a podcast uh, with various athletes. But, you know, I thought, well, there's plenty of brilliant female coaches out there on the Isle of Man, so why not invite some of them in along and, and, and sort of get their ideas on on coaching and, and find out a little bit more about what makes you guys tick and why you got into coaching in the first place so i mean what what was the what was the main thing how long have you all been coaching for now so who goes first <laughs> <laughs> oh you spoke first you can go all first right, Claire. I'll take it. so i've been coaching various sports um for a while but not really got into them properly but for netball i've been about 15 years now right okay so what else did you coach um i did a little bit of badminton and i do um like just general fundamentals with children basically yeah. excellent so 15 years in netball as well yes. excellent all right how about you heather many years ago i used to coach hockey but now ah. it's mainly swimming probably about the past five years yeah. i mainly teach as opposed to coach, but I am the head coach at Peel, and I help out with the development group from the Ironman Swimming. So I'd say five years, maybe. Awesome, awesome five years. How about you, Dana? Um, probably about maybe, maybe 15 years as well, I think, mm-hmm. Claire, really. Um, and I, I started just, uh, first of all, with the kids down at Western AC, and there was a number of sprinters who wanted some help, so just sort of volunteered to go and help them, given my background yeah. in sprinting. Um, so yeah, I just, just really wanted to, to help out really at club level and after that opened it up to any of the island athletes really, but, but predominantly sprinting, sprint yeah. coaching. Excellent. And Trish, how did you get into judo? Well, I, um, about 40, when I was 40, my husband bought me a licence, judo licence, so I've been doing it for about 12 years now, coaching for about six. <laughs> so Douglas Judo Club was going to shut. Really? The coach was retiring, so me and my husband decided we'd take over. So we went and did our coaching qualifications. Yeah. So we're head and assistant coach now at Douglas Duo. Excellent. So pathway-wise, I mean, did any of you get involved because your children were doing it, or was it all sports that you were in love with already and you participated in as athletes, for instance? I got involved because my son asked me to teach him to swim. Ah. And so I thought I'd better learn how to do it properly, and it's just developed from there. Right, excellent. So, how, how, what was your pathway, I suppose, into for? I was a netball player. Yeah. And then, you must know Marie Skillacorn. Who doesn't? You hear her for you, so yeah. No offence, Marie, <laughs> but she'll, she'll take that one. <laughs> so, she decided that everyone should have clubs and we should have opportunities for younger players. And so, she wanted to yeah. find different areas of the island, and I took on Peel. And so, I created a club from our one netball team and that's how I got into coaching the youngsters and then started coaching the senior side and then yeah. more recently I've started coaching the island squad since we developed it officially and so yeah it's all Marie's fault all Marie's fault <laughs> oh, well, good on you Marie so like I say thank you very much so Dana you actually competed for a quite a high level didn't you um yeah quite a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I had, a, I had my days as an athlete and of course I'm still really, really passionate about the sport. Um, and so for me, it was, it was a bit of both really once, yeah. obviously because I've got, I had children that, that were t- taking part in athletics and various other sports. Um, but I just wanted to give something back and get yeah. involved in a sport that I, I love, you know, still love to this day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was really all about giving something back and sharing knowledge really. So how, how has that helped being an athlete in terms of... Uh uh, your experiences, because you competed at GB level, didn't you, as a sprinter? Uh, how how did that help you in terms of preparing athletes for competitions, having those experiences? Well, I'd like to think it helped probably quite a lot, you know, because I've experienced a lot from their side. You know, some mm-hmm. of the athletes, I can understand, you know, how how things are for them, the worries they have, the the, the concerns, and you know, a lot of the issues they face from an athlete's point of view. Yeah. Um, 
you know, what's quite nice is I've been able to share my knowledge, but also share the things that didn't go well for me mm -hmm. as well as the things that did. So, and I think that's quite useful actually to sort of teach those things and, and sort of share that information. So, um, so yeah, I think you know, having been there and, and sort of experienced, you know, the training side of it and the competition, you know, hopefully I've been able to sort of give a little nugget yeah. of information on, on that side too. Absolutely. Well, well, in everyone's path, there's going to be bumps along the road, isn't there? And you know, it's no one's path is linear and to success. So, you know, having those bumps along the road to share with other people are, are, are vital, really, aren't they? And, mm -hmm. and whether that's as a competitor or other bumps in the road through life. You know, I think as coaches, it's quite good to be able to set some of those challenges within our own coaching sessions, so that our athletes become, a bit, you know, quite resilient to those experiences. So, Tricia, uh, did you take part in judo yourself as well? I did. Yeah, yeah. I'd been watching uh, judo players on the island for about ten years plus, just on the sidelines. And uh, what happened was the, the British Judo Association changed their syllabus, mm -hmm. which allowed people like myself, older people, to learn and get involved in judo and you could grade at the club, whereas previously you had to go to the UK and, and compete for your grades. Yeah. So it was a nice, easy way of, of getting into the sport. So um, yeah, I did, I competed a bit. I was training for the game squad for Orland. I didn't get there because right. they put my weight category and I got injured, but um, yeah, it was it, one of the best things I've ever done, Excellent. is to do judo. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so sort of moving on, I mean, uh, no doubt you've all had lots of people who've helped you along the way in coaching and sort of uh, fellow coaches, people who you may have seen across the pond internationally. What sort of uh, coaches or, and people out there have inspired you to, to sort of develop as coaches really and who's influenced you? Open question to everyone to shoot in first. Shall so go again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so obviously the biggest step in my coaching career is the fact that we moved into international netball mm -hmm. and to be a country in our own right and since then I've met loads of people and the obviously the biggest people for me is my assistant coach Rob who is just he's phenomenal he keeps me on the straight and narrow when I'm going a bit wild <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, Paul and Rich from Sport Academy they have been amazing and I just and I don't see them that often, but when I do, they have a big impact on right. things that they say to me and things that they make me think about how I approach something. And so I just really appreciate that side of it. And obviously, I went to Sport Academy for the, for the last session and I learned so much just there about yeah. how I can treat people as opposed to, you know, I didn't need to be an athlete to be there. Being a coach was the right thing to try and understand the girls that I coach and yeah. what they're going through. So. Yeah, massive influence on me in the last couple of years. Brilliant. So, I mean, it just goes to show the, the importance of having a, a network of people around you who can support you. And it's not, like you say, it's not always necessarily people within your own sport either, is it? It yeah, can be no. much further than that. Yeah. And it's great to see examples of sort of uh, you know, cross sport collaborations and, and getting ideas from other coaches. So, that's brilliant. So, how about you, Heather? How about you, sir? <laughs> um, well, Leo Holland, obviously, he's been very helpful. Our he's national coach, coach, yeah. Our national coach. And there's another guy who coaches called Alan Wignall, who's had has worked with three of the national coaches. So he's, he's a mind of information and knowledge. Right, yeah, he's benefited from three different mentors, yes, yeah, and has, pulling yeah. all that information yeah, so together. Having conversations with him uh, are, are very inspirational. Um, further afield, there's a guy called Brad Stevens, who is a basketball coach in America. Okay. And um, he is always calm. So whether they're losing or winning, you wouldn't know. He is always calm. Uh, so always rational. So to me, he doesn't let his emotions hijack what's going on. Mm -hmm. He keeps a calm mind and so can make rational decisions. Very good at managing his chimp, then, is he? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I guess brilliant that you can take from a sport like basketball inspiration from a coach in a team sport and put that into an into an individual sport scenario. That's really good. So how Dana and Trish, key influences for you guys over the years? Well, I think initially for me it was probably, you know, um, thinking back to the people who helped me along the way uh, and you know helped me along my journey and. 
Um, it's amazing actually how many amazing people there are out there that yeah. do give up their time to help. Um, and they're just so inspirational. And I think it's also really valuable from a, an athlete's point of view to have a coach, to have somebody yeah. to just bounce things off or encourage you or you know, to, to just mm -hmm. meet whatever your needs happen to be. Um, so I was really fortunate. I, I had a, a number of people that helped me along the way. Um, my West, the West Bay Sea, who's a club I've always been there um, connected with. A number of people there who would help out. My coach originally was Brian uh, Madrill, who was right in the very early days. Right. I then moved on and had a couple of extra sort of coaches um, subsequent to that. So I'd have a coach locally, and that's Brian, and then I would have a coach in the UK. And that worked really well to, to have that combination. Um, and then more recently, I would say over the years, um, quite well, quite influenced by all the coaches that you meet actually, mm -hmm. both within athletics. We've got some great coaches in athletics. Um, and all the sports and being part of the academy, the, the sports academy, it's been really good to meet coaches from other sports and yeah. you know hear some of their philosophies and, and, and just chat through some of their, their issues and their ideas as well. So, yeah. Super, excellent. How about you, Trish? Any key people there who've really sort of inspired you? Absolutely. When I was training, it would be uh, Rob and Dave Crow up in Ramsey. They were the, the Ramsey coaches, Steve Reed at Douglas. And um, just recently, um, we, I've got a good connection with Kendall Judo Club. Mm -hmm. So we have Mike Lichtrop, who's a very good um, international coach. Um, I've been on training days with Sophie Cox, who's an ex-Olympian. And just having that connection, mm -hmm. and when you get the time to go across, then you, you, you can experience that and mm -hmm. bring whatever back. <laughs> you know, they run camps, lots of camps, and if you, if you go... You, you're exposed to many, many coaches. Yeah, it's, mm. it's great to get across the pond, isn't yeah. it? And, and, and connect with people in different environments and you know, and take your players out there as well to sort of mm. see, see what those uh, experiences are like. Because you can get a bit of tunnel vision, tunnel vision on the Isle of Man sometimes, can't you? And it's nice to go out and, and, and see what else is happening. And also, just to give you that bit of confidence that what we do over here is often as good as, if not better, than what's going on across the pond. Sometimes we often think everything over there is shiny and brilliant. And in actual fact, you know, we've got to back ourselves. Oh, absolutely back ourselves. Mm. Uh, so, what, for you guys, what, what epitomises a good coach? What sort of things do you think, what sort of qualities do you think that, you know, make up a good coach? What, open and learning mm -hmm. for both coach and player because you're learning all the time from each other <laughs> and uh, you know everybody's opinion matters yeah you know, and listening to that opinion and yeah listening yeah and listening yeah. Is, a, is a big key and understanding what their goals and aspirations are and what you can do mm -hmm. to help them achieve that <laughs> but it's unknown your player <laughs> it is right because everybody's goals are different aren't mm -hmm. they yeah and I think it's really important to really listen to mm -hmm. you you know your athlete and, uh, and make sure you're actually working with them. Yeah, I suppose not imposing your goals upon the athlete for them, you know, li living sort of vicariously through them I suppose as well. And having the yeah. knowledge to be able to adapt to meet their goals mm -hmm. and not, as you say, impose what you want them to do. It's got to come from within them or they're not going to achieve it for you. Yeah, got to be really flexible haven't you, you know, in, in, in your approach and sort of, uh, and, and we don't always get it right do we, no one ever does and it's again it's, it's learning from that isn't it. Uh, I've had it. for sure. So, I mean, what what sort of things do you guys get up to in terms of uh, CPD? Because I mean, I know some of you have touched upon the the academies helped you. So, I mean, what what is it about the academy? Do you think that's sort of I don't know maybe giving you some extra input? I suppose for me, it was the uh, connection between the player mm -hmm. and the parent and the coach. Right. Okay. Because because that that was uh, brilliant. Yeah. Because the player that I've got and his parents, we get on so much better now. Really. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, and everybody supports everybody else, mm -hmm. and, and not just that. It's understanding the youngsters. Yeah. You know, and how they are. Because I didn't know about youngsters' brains and how they. I don't have children or anything like that. So so it was really quite interesting for me to understand where they might be at fifteen years yeah. old and and things like that. Yeah, absolutely invaluable to me that one. Awesome. Mm. I mean, what what sort of thing? Because you, you've been to the academy as well, haven't you, Claire? So yeah. what, what what have you taken away from that? The first thing I took from the academy was definitely that I haven't got twelve players. I've got twelve people, and I need to learn what makes each and every one of them tick. And wider than that, I've got an even bigger squad. You know, so yeah. 
in order to give everybody the same opportunity I have to like treat everybody the same by trying to understand everybody mm -hmm. and what like exactly the, the girl said before that what makes them tick but also how they work together how they understand each other how our yeah. relationship is how the relationship is together and how the relationship is with the sport they need to take to the court understanding that they're playing not just for themselves but for one another and for me it's about creating that culture that allows them to feel like that and that's that's literally how I want my yeah. coaching story to go so excellent yeah. so a real sort of insight into your sort of coaching philosophy there that was really good yeah I just mm. it's definitely about the players and my aim on my coaching journey is to be a player-centered coach and if I look after them individually hopefully the team will Mm -hmm. look after it themselves so go from there fantastic and, and Dana you've been there as a facilitator as well haven't you in that capacity at the academy yeah it's been so brilliant yeah how has that sort of I mean how has that uh, enabled you to sort of uh, develop as a coach by helping other people and athletes and parents and that sort of experience well I think it's been really interesting um being privy to sort of um, information, all the, all the different speakers that come in mm. and talk. It's been really interesting kind of just learning more generally, you know, about areas where you know a little bit, but actually there's so much more and, mm. and we are all continually learning and I think that's really important. Um, learning about other sports as well, that's been really interesting, you know, and sort of interacting people with different sports, you know, it's, um, it's amazing the different approaches and the, 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 the different type of people that we engage with and actually, you know, it, it, as we've all sort of said, you know, it really is about knowing your athlete. And so being part of the academy has just, you know, mm. given us the opportunity, I think, to sort of meet so many different people and so many different sports um, coaches and speakers. And, and, and it's been great actually being on the facilitator side. In fact, I went there with three hats, really. I, I was there as a coach, also as a parent yeah. and also as a, as a facilitator. Um, so it's been fantastic, actually. And what I think really what Trish said, it's been really good to be able to see that there are or to make it very clear there are three roles you know the three individuals involved the parents mm -hmm. the coaches and the athletes all have different, slightly different roles to play and it's quite nice for everybody to hear that that, that clarification I think yeah I and mean, the exercise where we looked at uh, the expectations each of us had of each other so the expectations that the athletes had of their coach and their parent yeah the expectations the parent had of the coach and the athlete and the expectations the coach had of the parent and the athlete it was and, and feeding that back to each other and communicating that was a real eye-opener I think as well for it's really good a lot learning of people. I think mm. so outside of the I mean the academy uh, what, what sort of other things what other sort of CPD do you guys get up to <laughs> well I was fortunate enough to do your coaching your two-year coaching well, the, the coaching development program coaching we, development we ran program. about four years ago now, that yeah. wasn't it, yeah. So there was lots of CPDs on that mm -hmm. and you're continuing to do that with your coaching uh, festivals. So it's continuous all the time, you're always researching, always looking up things on the internet, always looking for other people's point of view. It's because it, you can take away one thing that will make a difference to one child. So you've got lots of tools in your toolbox that can get through to someone, then it's worth mm -hmm. doing the CPDs. And things change within a sport, you need to be on top of it all the time to make sure that the information you're giving your athletes is up to date, mm -hmm. knowledgeable and correct. Absolutely. And what sort of, what, what sort of CPD for you is give you the most bang for your buck? Because there's masses out there, I mean, we, we, you've, we've got our sport specific CPD, uh, our sort of technical and tactical kind of stuff which more often than not is what we focus on quite a lot in, especially initially in our coaching journey I suppose uh, for uh, I mean things like the academy for instance now helping to draw out a lot more of the uh, social and emotional and psychological and the, the sort of uh, the more generic cross sport you know kind of information that's valuable as well so. I think the thing is we're probably all very good we've all done our coaching qualifications to whatever level and we've all you know are continually researching and, and, mm -hmm. and you know learning as we go along but I think the academy in particular and certain other um, sessions we attend it's making us more rounded mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. we're better coaches as a result of yeah. that so we're not only focused on the technical aspect or you know just really sort of having a very narrow view actually that's a much better way of looking at it and become a better mm -hmm. person all around because you know, not your your athletes are not always going to reach the Olympics or whatever their aspirations yeah. are. And actually, 
being part of sport is not only about that, it's actually about really making them a better person and bringing happiness to them and fulfillment and various other things. Mm-hmm. So actually, if you can be part of that, um, you know, and we've done our job really, haven't we? So like developing people using sport as the, the vehicle. And then if you know stardom in, uh, in sport comes to them as, as a byproduct of that, then great. And if not, you, you've helped develop a really class, brilliant person. Well, we spoke about mm. it at the Breakfast Club recently about holistic coaching, didn't we? Mm. And how it's about the whole person, not just that individual sport. Yeah. So looking at you know developing people first and athletes second. Uh, so yeah. Excellent. Judo seen as a as a way of life. <laughs> And not necessarily just a sport. Yeah. So you teach all that extra discipline and respect, and and, that, and that's quite a core mm-hmm. in judo. And most judo players are recreational judo players, so they don't particularly have the aspirations to yeah. to go and and uh, you know be the top. There's only a very few percentage of judo players mm-hmm. in the UK that end up being an Olympian. You know. So um, yeah. yeah, my CPD the the for the judo you have specifics that you have to revalidate anyway okay. every three years you have to go and do certain things um, but I find just from other coaches <laughs> that have coached a lot longer than I have and you just tap into their experience yeah. and, and how they do things and, and you know and you come away sometimes I've had a visiting coach and I've come away and I've thought wow that is yeah. that's fantastic right and I make my notes when I get home and, and then I sort of try and yeah put that into the sessions afterwards you know so that's how I do it it's become a bit of a cliche but I think it's a good cliche I mean a good coach is a good thief you know they're out there <laughs> thieving ideas aren't they from other coaches and there's nothing wrong with that and in fact I think I'd, I'd, I'd actively encourage it get out there and, and, and share I think coaches working together and, and sharing ideas helps it's, it's good for everyone so uh, Claire's just informed us that she's been taking part in some uh, free online learning with the Open University can you tell us a little bit more about it Claire <laughs> yeah okay so Paul Jones did post something on um, the Sport Academy site which was about coaching other coaches and so I clicked on and I enrolled onto the course and it's actually really really good and um, it teaches you in different modules about different things and it has lots of um, people with a lot of sp- experience with little video clips of how they feel and sort of what they bring to um, helping other coaches being a coach developer um, but then I've delved a bit deeper and there's there's hundreds of courses for free and so I've signed up for another eight and it is about 119 hours of learning but how exciting is that (laughs) because it's really good and you know even if it's just a case of while I'm waiting to pick the kids up you know I get it on the iPad and I read it for a bit and you know there's so much that I've learned in just the the four modules or something that I've done of the the one that I've enrolled into first and it's it's like a really good book. Mm-hmm. You can't put it down. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I signed up for another eight. So anybody who does want to do more CPD for free at home, that's your bag. Fantastic. So that's the Open University. Yeah. Just search it online. Yeah. And then search. I suppose if you search sport sport related um, courses, it says free courses, yeah. and then there is health, sport, and fitness, and um, and then a load of other free courses for anybody else who wants to do anything else. Um, but yeah, and then you just slide all the way through, and there's there's tons of them, and I just selected the ones that I felt were appropriate for me right now. Um, but yeah. after this 119 hours, I'm going back. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you, you can do that at your own pace as well, can't yeah, you? you can pick yeah, yeah. Put it down. As, pick it you know, up. Fit get it when life. the kids are at school or just waiting to pick them up and then yeah it's really good get it on your phone pick Excellent. it up there's a good sales pitch for the open university <laughs> but it's free yeah <laughs> thanks it's really for that good. Claire there is mm. so uh, moving on to another sort of theme uh, we've got four ladies who coach do you feel being a female in coaching has ever provided you with any additional challenges compared to your male counterparts or have you had any, any, any experiences that because you're female has, has hindered you in any way? I'm mostly, well, I'm in a female dominant sport, mm-hmm. so I'm not going to have the same yeah. um, things, you know, challenges as the, the others might do. Um, but my assistant coach, Rob, is a male in a female dominant sport. And I think, yeah, yeah, I think you'd have to ask him that question, but I'm sure he's had a few, <laughs> a few challenges <laughs> along his path. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, so. That's that's me for that. <laughs> I'm okay for challenges. 
I've never experienced anything Brilliant. like that ever <laughs> Good. In, in judo, not at all. <laughs> Excellent. No, I don't think I have, to yeah. be honest, no. You know, that's really good. I mean, uh, and I, I, I don't know if you, if you notice in your sports at all or not. I mean, what's the ratio of male to female coaches like? Is, is, is it even? Is there a big imbalance? Or you st- obviously, in, in netball, it's mostly female, mm-hmm. so it's probably not going to be sort of a concern at all. But for swimming, athletics and judo, do you notice uh, any, any particular shift? I'm the only female judo coach on the okay. island. Mm-hmm. And do you think there are any barriers to that at all? No, I, th- I think um, there's not a lot of girls in the sport, which mm-hmm. I would like to openly encourage <laughs> um, youngsters and uh, senior players, as, yeah. s- as we say. You know, And I think it, because it's a martial art, it's maybe seen as aggressive and things and, and, and stuff like that, but it's not. It's, it's one of the yeah. best things you can, you can learn. It really is. It's a fantastic mm-hmm. sport. Super. Yeah. I think... Uh, the Isle of Man, with it being quite, you know, very sports mad, I think we've got a really good number of, of girls who get involved in sport. Yeah. You know, and I think probably, without knowing the figures, I mean, when I was working in sport development, we would do a questionnaire to the primary schools and we'd get an idea of numbers of uh, boys and girls getting engaged with clubs and sports and so on and so forth. But I think it always looked like it was a, a, a good balance. You know, we definitely weren't massively underrepresented with, with girls getting involved in sport. Uh, and, I, and it's great to see that you guys aren't experiencing any sort of negative, uh, any ne- negatives at all because of your gender, and nor should you, nor should you at all. We've all been coaching for a long time, some of you is 15 years, five years or more, different sports. Uh, why do you still do it? What makes you tick? What keeps you coming back every week? What 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 stirs your passion? The love for the sport, the love for the girls, mm-hmm. see and the enjoyment. Yeah, really yeah, there. absolutely. And because, obviously, more recently for us, because we've got talent, mm-hmm. and you know, sometimes if you don't fight for that talent to be at the forefront, then maybe no one else will. I mean, I know we've got a lot of people here that that are there, but not a lot of people have the time or maybe something to put in and you know if if you can then give it give mm-hmm. it back to what you love so i think you touched up on that before that it's about giving something back sometimes and if we all love what we do you know keep going <laughs> Brilliant. it's massively rewarding as well you know and it's not about successes you know and achievements necessarily it's just it's to see a smiling face mm-hmm. or, yeah. you know... It's growing confidence. It's fantastic, yeah. And I love nothing more than coming down a track, track on a Monday night and there's just groups of athletes all just having a laugh and, you know, they get on with their work and they work really hard, but actually, ultimately, they're friends. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all in a really healthy environment. And it's just fantastic, really. And, yeah, and we love it. <laughs> we yeah. love it at the end of the day, even <laughs> in the middle of the winter when we're in full waterproofs. <laughs> well, me, because you're all indoors. <laughs> 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 Outdoor sport, you need a good set of waterproofs. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just great. Yeah. Nice. I'm a bit like you, Dana. It's, it's seeing that smile at the end of the session when they've cracked something that they've been trying for a mm-hmm. few weeks and they've managed it and they've they've thrown somebody with a throw that they've been practicing and, and they, they've, they, they've actually managed it and for me to visibly see that improvement and I've been able to facilitate some of that uh, is is all you need mm-hmm. really isn't it and I, and I still enjoy it and for me it's a great personal sense of achievement as well brilliant Jack it everyone I miss you Heather I like to see <laughs> them what I would call develop a habit of curiosity so uh-huh. they're always questioning what they're doing, why are they doing it, how will they get better? And as long as they're doing that to me, they're motivated and inspired and committed. Yeah. So that's the environment I try to create. Super. That's really good, that, because it ch- keeps you on your toes as a coach, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Um, you have to keep it enjoyable for yeah. them to want to keep coming and to want to keep doing it. And if you can't answer that question, what, what, why are you doing a certain thing in a session, then you have to ask yourself, why are you doing it? <laughs> Ultimately, why should I be here? Yeah. I'd like to see the questions you got in your preschool sessions, though. I um, don't think I can pass them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so half an hour gone like that. So I suppose just a couple of final sort of things to touch on. Uh, so as coaches, what support do you feel would help you guys develop further as coaches? 
if you had a mystical ball uh, or a magic wand and you could wave it and you could get any support or help you wanted to make, help you develop the coach, what would it be? Got you thinking now. Yeah, we have an indoor facility, that'd be nice. <laughs> <For> athletics. <laughs> athletics, yeah, indoor, <laughs> that'd be brilliant. A little 60 meter track with yeah, an indoor yeah, pole vault yeah. margin barrier, wouldn't it? Um, throwing nets. I think yeah. facilities is a massive thing over here, though. Yeah, I think we're, we're quite fortunate in lots of respects, mm. but there's... Massively fortunate, aren't we? We are, yeah. aren't we, really? And I think people take that for granted, but, you know, there yeah. are certain areas where I'm sure we could still improve, yeah. and, you know, Absolutely. other parts of the country who have got those advantages, of course, that makes all the difference. Yeah. So, you know, but you're right, on the whole, we're actually... We're, we're not too yeah. bad at all. We are good. They're well used as well, which is a good mm. thing, Very. isn't it? You know what I mean? That's There's the not enough hours in the day, yeah. though, f mm. to film all of the sport that we want to, you know, put in there. So I know that we, netball, have a trouble trying to find all the hours they need, you know, within yeah. the clubs because they're growing so big. Um, we have to separate them into different age groups, and there's just not enough hours in the day. Um, but it's a really good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of growth in the sport, hasn't there, in netball over the last sort of five years or more? Yeah, massive. You know, a lot of lot more members coming in. Mm -hmm. Fantastic to see. Yeah. How about you, Heather? If that magic wand, if you could wave it, oh, what would help you to help you <laughs> develop further? If we had more water time, of course. Water time, yeah. yeah, yeah so difficult. access. Yeah. Especially with the NSC having been out of action, yeah. we got around it and got everyone swimming. Yeah, and to go and work with Brad Stevens. <laughs> well, basketball coach in America. Yeah. Yes, awesome. Books are from him. Yeah. Have you ever reached out to him? Has he got contact? Does he take emails and stuff like that? Might be worth looking into because. Because we had that uh, dinner with Eddie Jones, mm -hmm. didn't we? And took away some ideas from him and transferred them into the pool, and the children loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. I think it's just, it don't. Don't be afraid to be brave and reach out to people, even if you've never met or spoken to them before. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give John Whiting a plug. I think he is a master networker. Uh, wherever he seems to go, whether, in a, whether it be a coaching conference or whether it be a course or where, wherever he goes in the world, he, he does put himself out there and he'll speak to people and he'll make coaching contacts and he'll uh, have people he can just touch on and ask a question. And I think that's really helped him develop as a coach. So yeah, reach out to the Brad. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have I covered anyone? Have I covered anyone else for the magic wand, uh, 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 Tricia? Judo's a, a bit different because we're grassroots. Yeah. We're at uh, church halls and and things like that. But I think uh, it'll be more master classes. Yeah. You know, get coaches over here or right. to kids over there to go to the master classes. But they yeah. have to be put on in the in the UK. Yeah. You know, so I suppose that would be. So we've got a magic wand could and you could bring them over here. Bring them over here, yeah. yeah, and have a full day at the NFC with right. you know, some of the top judo players would be ideal. Sometimes it's good to ask those sort of more naive questions, like if money wasn't an issue, or if you had a magic wand, what would you do? And sometimes you can come out with some really creative ideas. And what's more, you can sometimes come out with some really creative ways of actually making it happen. So it might seem like it's, it's impossible initially, but just talking to other people and and, and getting the idea out there in, in the open, it's got more of a chance that it might come to life. Yeah. Well, Trish touched there on you know coaching masterclass where you bring coaches to here to mm -hmm. our athletes, and but from a coaching perspective, I think it'd be quite nice to actually go away and actually mm -hmm. you know take part and and, and sort of um, be able to watch other coaching sessions yeah. that are being delivered to just see if they're any different, how yeah. different, you know what sort of things they might incorporate, you mm -hmm. know what other ideas can you you gain from that. And as you see them in their environment with their yeah. own athletes, and mm -hmm. you know, see how that that sort of looks. So That's good. Something yeah. is happening in swimming now, and we've had Olympians come over, and world athletes come over and do master classes with the children, which they love. But equally, some of the coaches have gone yeah. across yeah. and worked with the across, and, it, and it's worked really yeah. well. That's brilliant to see some of these things taking place. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, just to sort of wrap up, uh, yeah, doing about 35 minutes. That was a really great conversation, ladies. Thank you very much for your time indeed. Uh, and hopefully, you listeners, you've really enjoyed that and, and found some inspiration and some uh, tips there from the girls on how to improve yourselves as coaches as well. Uh, we're going to draw that to a close. This episode will be going out in September. 
and before we go as well if you're listening very early in September we do have our annual coaching festival coming up on the 6th 7th and 8th of September so if you're listening really sharply and eagerly and keenly uh, there still might be a little bit of time for you to sign up to that so if you go on the Isle of Man Sport Coaches Forum on Facebook you can find information on it there you could email me on trevor.christian at gov.im or call me on 688590 I can give you all sorts of information on how you can get involved with that coaching festival. Uh, we've got lots of things going on. We've got uh, two UK coaching workshops with John Mills, the former director of coaching at British Cycling, and he's going to be looking at coaching the person in front of you on the Friday evening. Saturday, we've linked up with N7 Sports Events, and we're going to have breakfast with the rugby legend that is Brian Habana. Uh, the South African winger, equal Joan Alomu's try scoring record. So it'll be a chance to sort of break bread with Brian. Cliche, I'm getting in there now, break bread with Brian. And uh, ask him some questions in a really interactive Q&A. And then moving on in the afternoon, it's going to be all centered around working with children at primary age, so like five to 12 year olds. So if you're working with that particular age group, get signed up for that Saturday, 25 pound for the whole day, breakfast with Brian and Banner, and your, and your lunch, cheap as chips. Uh, and finally, on, on the Sunday, we've got two fantastic guys from hockey, but also work in multi-sport in, in coach development. So we've got Danny Newcomb and we've got uh, Scott McNeil. Uh, so they work with the likes of the, the Welsh hockey team, Great British Hockey, uh, heavily involved with uh, Danny with Oxford Brooks University and the coaching degrees there. So a really knowledgeable guy on all things coaching. Uh, and Scott basically re- has rewritten the hockey coach education plan so you know he's a real not just a technical theoretical guy but he's out there in practice as well as a, as a practical coach so real good people to come and watch and see so if you want to get involved with that give me a shout anything else before we sign off ladies to any burning issues you want to get in <laughs> no <laughs> excellent thank you very much and uh, hopefully we'll get lots of people listening and uh, we'll see you soon Thank you. Bye.